the breakdown. Starting with Dark Magic by Nothing Nowhere. This is the Vermont Musicians' sixth studio album released independently for the first time for since, the first time? like, 2015 or 2016. Okay, since, since, gotcha. Since, since. Um, uh, independently on the 8th of February. Dark Magic consists of just a, a small amount of songs, like 18 mm -hmm. tracks, mm -hmm. and is the much-anticipated follow-up to last year's Phenomenal Void Eternal LP. Spoiler alert, we gave that one our number two record of the year. We were very, very happy with it. All right, let's unpack. A lot's changed. Let's uh, unpack. Nothing Nowhere, off of Fueled by Ramen. What the fuck happened there? I don't know. I don't get it, man. Because, like, n not only are are we sort of, like, pushing this as, like, being an independent release, but I feel like we're aggressively we're pushing aggressively the fact aggressively that we're that. no longer on Fueled by Ramen. It's very, very clear to me that that relationship did not play out. Also, with maybe a, a, a little bit of, like, the lyrical sentiment within here, that it's just, like... That relationship went badly, and it, and it sucks because like nothing nowhere really is an artist that Field by Ramen shouldn't have fumbled. Like there is exactly. so much potential there for them to have really fueled nothing nowhere's growth, and 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 it makes me question a lot. Like suddenly I'm thinking to myself like. Were a lot of the Void Eternal decisions, were they, were they fueled by Ramen's choice? Did Fueled by Ramen, or, or were they nothing? Did Fueled by, Fuel by Ramen didn't back it? Right, did, did, didn't believe, you know? Right, like what kind of numbers did Fueled by Ramen expect that they didn't get? Like what, what, kind, of, what kind of backing did Nothing Nowhere expect that Fueled by Ramen did, did not give him? Like I feel like there's so, like I'm so curious about how that relationship played out. I want both sides of the story, you know? I, I definitely do. Like, there's lyrical content on here talking about, you know, I can tour with whatever the what, whoever the fuck I want to, whatever bands I want to. I just feel like I could only ever get a real, authentic, genuine answer from nothing, nowhere. And I would only ever get corporate speak from No, of, of course. You know what I mean? I, I want both sides in the sense of, like, you want to be like a, a fly on the wall, right? right? right. You, you want to know the inner workings of both halves of this relationship. Because obviously definitely... it's tough to just go ask somebody, you know what I yeah. mean? I mean, uh, uh, outside looking in there, there always seems like perfect marriages as far as labels and bands go and fueled by ramen and nothing nowhere definitely seemed like one of them when that was first announced. Yeah. And then we get a great, we get an outstanding album. Last it was a really year. good album. Right. So like, who was pissed about it? <laughs> who didn't genuinely love that album? I don't know. But um, and then what does it mean for Nothing Nowhere to then come back, do this independent release, and go back to the style of music that he somewhat, became popular? Somewhat, somewhat, a, a partial return to roots, like ninety nine percent, a majority return to roots. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nothing Nowhere that we were familiar with up until like that sort of pop punk single that we got like right before void eternal i mean i think this definitely leans heavier on the emo rap side of things at the beginning of the record for like the first nine songs and then i think it does like there's like not death but like there's some straight up metalcore breakdowns towards the end of certain Fine. songs it does get grungier but i i would i would i would say we are leading our listeners astray if we did not categorically call this like emo hip-hop no not wrong i mean so so for you though like excited for that return like when you get dark oh, yeah, magic absolutely. announced and and you're sort of like feeling the vibe out for this the energy from from some of the announcement here like you kind of realize it's going to be emo rap again and you're like i'm, I'm kind of down for that right I, mean, I i sort of like not being able to guess where nothing nowhere is going to go next 
Agreed. But you and I have had this conversation a lot lately in that we feel like there has been a weird black hole left with nobody picking up the pieces of what felt like a really strong burgeoning subculture that was coming up in the scene. And then to have so many artists pivot away, whether it was to like the pop punk side or like the heavier side. So it's nice to have like what I would consider one of the best walk it back and do it again right yeah try it out like again. for me this is a, a be- if like anyone could come back to this style nothing nowhere is best case scenario bread and butter as yeah. far as i'm concerned for nothing nowhere um <laughs> i think that the way that dark magic is presented is one of my favorite things about this record it's the best part of it so obviously you've got like the the knight in their armor as the as the cover art and then you've yeah. got like the grungier looking dark magic font in the background and then their entire face is blacked out you know obviously nothing no we're covering the faces like the whole thing but it, it, mm-hmm. it's it's got this very dark energy and then for the first half of this record for the most part you've got a ton of little interludes that are, are laced within the songs. That's the entirety of the album. Um, the, it, it, it's, it, it's not. It might, it's not because it's a it's a pet peeve of mine that it, it's not really happening for it like the last shows six up songs. In, in later parts of the album. I'm almost rare. sure. It, okay, super rare. not not with the intensity, right. but it does remain enough that it keeps all of the album threaded. It, it should have happened in like the closer and it doesn't and it bothers okay. me. But, but so what we're talking about is there's a bunch of like, <laughs> there's this famous TikTok sound that's essentially it's, it's shadow wizard money gang. And it's so like a, a fake producer tag. I feel so old right now. Uh, <laughs> but like, I feel like nothing nowhere saw that. And they're like, Oh, I, I'm going to make an album around this. Okay. And it's fucking brilliant. Okay. So you have a bunch of like little producer tags that, that nothing nowhere is added where it's like this beat courtesy of the Reaper gang, 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 gang. And it's not exactly that, but you know what to I mean? To be fair, like, I feel shit like, like we've that. seen this kind of thing before, right? Like yeah. I remember Oliver Francis doing something similar with the very least they're doing like sort of this spoken word tie together. That's like, Hey, you're no, 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 listening course. to fucking vibes radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like, this is, this is cool because it's not like a radio show. It's like, it it laces in um like news segments of a fake story happening of like it's all occult stuff and it's like the world is being taken over by demons or whatever and it's like um all that we know about our uh about nothing nowhere is that they lead like the reaper gang cult right they're a witch backwoods like, gang witchcraft shit um right another it, artist who did something slightly similar just not to cut you off but real quick garden um with that ep that i really adored a couple years back where they would do like this news report yeah. about like the murderer that like ended up getting like stopped yep um so i for me this is almost like quint not quintessential but like an aspect of the genre that i really love like i think it suits okay. this style very well well right? but i i like how heavily nothing nowhere leans Agreed. into like it's almost the theme of this it's, yeah. it's like following this story and, and like again not far off fr- from garden like you were saying but like another version of that that i just really really enjoy we haven't seen nothing nowhere do it before not that yes. i can remember Yes. Um, I also like the sort of cyclical nature of the concept that's being presented, which is to say that like it's this relationship between nothing, nowhere, which is like he'll come and corrupt. But then it's the idea that like the corrupted are also like saving them from themselves. Like it's like it's this this like really beautiful analogy sort of like mixed in there somewhere well that that I'm butchering like from head to toe. But but it's this idea that I'm trying like, to follow. The people need nothing nowhere and nothing nowhere needs the people. And that's yeah. essentially like the cult. So it's like while everyone is while it's presented as like a dark and mysterious and evil thing, it's really like actually like a wholesome and really positive thing. Yes. No, I don't think you're wrong about that. Um, I really enjoy the framing this device. Makes this it it makes this yes it makes it. it's it is the main draw for me. It's what ultimately takes this from a good record to a great one for me. Mm-hmm. And I think another thing that works incredibly well for this is just the pace. Every time this album needs to pick it up or slow it down a little bit, it knows exactly when to do it. Right, nothing feels overplayed, and that is an incredible compliment to pay an album that is. 18 tracks long yeah and granted it's not a long record 
for for being it is on tracks. paper though, right? Not wrong. I'm just saying, but it only ends up being like a 40 minute record, right. which is right, 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 standard right, 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 in this right. scene for sure. Avoid Eternal, I think, was longer, and it was you know six songs shorter. So, um, yeah, 25 I mean, 25 features longer though. <laughs> yeah, it was completely completely eliminated from this. Right, like the features. Pff, gone yeah for, after getting an album that was almost entirely based on features like that's an aspect that did not make the cut here well and i i don't really mind that like i didn't listen to this this record and think like oh man this this really would have gotten pushed over the edge with a uh, feature from like fucking who whoever knows whoever though cares. i did see some people posting like oh hey i'm i'm like pr production wise or like beat wise featured in this song which i guess is something that is sort of like lost on no that makes a, a ton of because sense i don't have like a a sense for like producers and stuff like that sure. In that nature not in the same way that i easily pull a vocal feature yeah no i think like uh nothing nowhere is still a very collaborative person and it would make sense that as a producer they would work with plenty of other producers to kind of perfect whatever vision you know this record is but um yeah as far as like vocal features i'm, I'm kind of happy there's none on here it was, it was nice just to get like an old fashioned sort of Nothing Nowhere album again. I mean, it's because with a new twist. It's because it's delivered with such conviction that I think you're right. I'm also fine with it because this feels so. Nothing Nowhere is really like planting their feet down with like a level of confidence that it's very convincing from someone who didn't need convincing how like important of an artist they are and how like skilled of a talent. Like, yeah. again, for them to go from, like, hey, fucking number two album of last year for us, and then completely change up the style, and then once again just, like, wow us, it's, like, I there are, there are next to no other artists who are doing it like nothing, nowhere. I'm sorry. No, in, 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 in this space, at the very least. No, I agree. Um, I end up super happy with this record, honestly, at the end of the day. I don't like it as much as Void Eternal. I, I won't give you that yeah i think i think i don't go as far as that or or even the album prior who which i also adore but the name consistently escapes me um burning down the house is not no, a it is not even fucking trauma factory close thank you burning down the house it has fire as on the a cover first shot at <laughs> trauma factory. we were just talking about the used um so what yeah i think i'd go like I'm somewhere between like a 7.5 and an 8 out of 10. I, I think I need a little more time with it to see what its staying power feels like. I think... But I, conceptually, I, I just love it. Yeah. Well, again, conceptually, I love most of it, but I feel like we sort of abandoned it towards the end. Granted, maybe I just wasn't listening closely enough by that that point. I like maybe my I need memory to spend a little more time with it. But, but again, you know, maybe this is... Um, <laughs> and 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 as I double check the uh, the track listing, I see a feature from Masagi. So like re retract <laughs> everything I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still comparatively one to forty on the last yeah, record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've cut back significantly <laughs> at the very least. Um, I'm probably at a seven here. I, I would have liked a little bit more consistency with that storytelling. Even though I, I don't disagree that it's it's still mostly all that, I would have liked them to really uh, bring it home at the very end. Okay. And then I'll settle on a 7.5 because now I feel a little more comfortable being over you. Okay. Okay. <laughs>